Welcome to Train Signal. My name is Ed Lieberman and I'd like to welcome you to this course on Windows Server 2008 Network Infrastructure. Now let me talk about what we're going to go over in this video. First I'll tell you a little bit about myself and Train Signal training as a whole. Then I'll go over exactly what's covered in each video of this course. We'll talk a little bit about the global Mantic scenario that we're going to use to help explain some of the technologies in this course. And then I will show you exactly what you will need if you want to follow along with me while watching the course. So first, let me tell you a little bit about me. My name is Ed Lieberman, and as you can see here, I have managed to rack up a number of different certifications over the years working in technology. But I'll tell you what, the, the letters I'd like you to pay attention to most would be right here. MCTS, Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist. And the reason why is because that's what this course is going to get you ready for. This course is going to help you to pass the 70-642 exam, which will give you a Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist certification as well. Now, I've been working in technology for about 18 years. When I first got started, I was working for an Apple dealer selling high-end Macintosh solutions. After that, I moved over into another company that was on the PC side of things. And in that company, I was not necessarily a formal IT professional for the company. I just happened to be the guy that knew a lot about computers. And so about 10 years ago, I made a decision to get a little more serious about my IT career and went ahead and decided to start putting these letters behind my name, start getting certified. And while I was in the process of doing so, I realized that I really enjoy helping others to learn. And I was made an offer to begin teaching these certification classes. So for the last 10 years or so, I have been primarily instructing IT professionals. Now, when I'm not in the classroom, I'm either out consulting with a company on their networking needs, or something I really enjoy doing is tutoring grade school children who are really struggling with math. Math is something that always has come very easy for me, and happens to be something that a lot of kids really struggle with. And I find that a big part of that struggle is they just need to have somebody there who is willing to give them the individualized support to help them realize how they can comprehend mathematic concepts. So that's something that I do when I'm not teaching or working in the IT field. Now, as far as train signal training as a whole, a couple things I want you to know about our courses. One, we use a very casual training method. You will find as we go through this course, you will see that, that we don't necessarily use all the formalities that you would find in a typical classroom. I'm just going to tell you about it, show you how it works. Because really, that's what it all comes down to. We want you to know how to do things, not just pass a test, theoretically saying you know how to do it. And we also try, wherever we can, to use scenario-based training which, as I mentioned in the beginning, we're going to talk in just a moment about the Global Mantics company that we're going to use as the scenario for this course. Very often, this can help you to relate with exactly why we might be doing a certain something when it comes to computer networking. So, what do we go over in this course? Well, after this video, you'll see video two. I will talk to you about configuring DHCP setting up a DHCP server so that you can deploy IP configurations to all of your clients. Video 3 will then go in and learn how to manage our DHCP servers and keep them up and running. In video 4, we'll talk about setting up routing where we see how to now take our network from one subnet and expand it into multiple subnets or multiple networks. In video 5, I'll talk to you about configuring DNS. DNS is a main component of name resolution so that users can use common names and computers can still communicate, but also for Active Directory communication within Windows Server 2008. Then in video 6, I'll talk to you about how to manage your DNS servers and keep them up and running. 
Then in video 7, we'll go over the whole concept of name resolution as a whole. In video 8, I'll talk to you about how to secure data, keep it secure on your servers. And we'll follow that up with video 9. You know, Once you have it secured, I will talk to you about how to share that data. And then in video 10, I'll talk to you about how to configure print services on a Windows Server 2008 computer. In video 11, I'll talk to you about something called Windows Server Update Services, or sometimes more commonly known as WSUS. And this is something that is used to help deploy Windows Update out to all of your clients. Video 12, we'll talk about backup and recovery. In video 13, we'll talk about monitoring Windows Server 2008. Video 14, configuring remote access so that we can allow users who are away from the office to be able to participate within our network. Then we'll talk about wireless networks, which in some instances is considered a form of remote access because you're not hardwired in, you're coming in wirelessly, so it's almost like you're remote to the network. Video 16, we'll talk about Windows Firewall, which is used to help secure your server. And then speaking of securing your server, in video 17, we'll talk about securing network traffic. So securing the data as it travels from one computer to another using something called IPsec or IP security. And then in video 18, we'll talk about network access protection or something that's more commonly just known as NAP. And I'll tell you what, after watching 18 videos, you may want to take a nap. And then finally in video 19, I will talk to you about certification. I'll talk to you about the 642 exam. I'll talk to you about how to prepare and how to sign up for the exam. Now let's take a look at the Global Mantics scenario. Now Global Mantics is a worldwide securities brokerage house which is headquartered in New York. But they also have three satellite locations. One in Chicago to keep tabs on the Chicago exchanges, one in Tokyo to keep up with the Asian markets, and then one in Dallas because the boss is from Texas and really doesn't like New York. Now, just to go through some of the more detailed specifics, there are 640 employees scattered throughout all locations. 500 are in New York, 50 in Tokyo, 80 in Chicago, and 10 in Dallas. Now there are also 12 users who travel worldwide using their laptops and do need to be able to connect remotely. And then also five of the 80 users in Chicago have been set up as what's called telecommuters, which is where they work from home connecting into the Chicago office. Now I have a diagram here to hopefully help clear some of this up, make it a little easier to look at. First of all, we have the New York headquarters where we have six servers along with our 500 Vista clients. We have our Chicago office with three servers and 75 clients. Now remember there were 80 employees out of Chicago but five of them are working from home. And then we have our Tokyo office with a couple of servers and 50 clients and in Dallas we have one server with only the 10 users that are out there working on Vista. Now we also have our 12 mobile users who travel around the world with their laptop. So this is the overall big picture scenario for the Global Mantics Corporation. Now in this course I will tell you that we are going to be basing just about everything surrounding the New York office. This course is going to introduce you into network infrastructure technologies which in order to learn network infrastructure you have to start off with a single office before you can branch out into bigger and better things. Now what are you going to need to follow along with this course? Well you will see on my desktop as I go through this course these 14 different computers that have been set up. But the reality is is that in this course as I said a moment ago we're going to be primarily working just in New York. So these seven computers are really the only ones that I think that I'll actually touch while we go through the course. You'll see here that I'm going to have a couple of domain controllers here in New York, New York DC1 and New York DC2. You always want to have those two domain controllers for fault tolerance. 
we'll have one domain controller running in Chicago and that's going to be covering the North America domain of our network and then we're going to have one domain controller running in Tokyo for the Asia domain in our network we'll have a member server also running in New York which you will see we're going to actually do most of our work on this member server is going to be heavily tasked we're going to use it for almost every networking technology we're going to use throughout this entire course I know that we will definitely use a Vista client out of New York and we'll probably even touch the occasional XP client out of Chicago now the reality is is you may not have access to seven computers or even have a computer that is capable of running seven virtual machines simultaneously but here's what I'll tell you first of all you really only need to have these three domain controllers running at all times and then from there you would only need the individual computer or computers that we're talking about in a specific video so we won't necessarily have all seven of these ever running at the same time now the other thing that I will tell you is again if you still don't have either a machine powerful enough to run even three or four virtual machines or maybe don't have access to three or four computers then what you will need to follow along quite frankly would be one computer running as a domain controller hosting an Active Directory domain you should have one other computer acting as a member server although I'll tell you what you could just do everything in this video pretty much from the one domain controller just have it be an everything computer and then you'll need one other computer to act as a client so there are a lot of options available to you but in this video if you take a look at what I'm gonna be doing and if you want to try to mirror what I'm doing these are the computers that I will be using now this is the desktop of my computer and these are the 14 computers that I was referring to that you will see but these individual icons that you see here like here's New York DC 1 and New York DC 2 what these are are these are icons representing what's called remote desktop connections the way I will be doing just about everything in this course is through remote desktop from my desktop here I will remotely connect to these other computers now there will be some instances where remote desktop won't work and then I will have to go to the actual machine but otherwise you will always see me connecting from here alright well are you ready to get started learning about Windows Server 2008 network infrastructure awesome well let's go then I'll see you in video 2 where we're gonna learn about DHCP configuration